Greetings, and welcome to our video class on the Universal Table, the primary diagram that explains the cosmology and universe of the Martinist tradition. It originated with Martinez de Pasquale, the founder of L'Ordre de Chevalier Maison et le Coin de l'Univers, or the Order of the Knights Masons, elect priests of the universe. This was a magical Masonic order based around the 1760s, and it has been copied and passed down by two of his primary students especially, Jean-Baptiste Willemose, the founder of the Rite Ecossais Rectifié, as well as the Chevalier Bienfaisant de la Cité Sainte, or CBCS, and another one of his students, Louis-Claude de Saint-Martin, the unknown philosopher, who went on to inspire Pappas to found Lord de Montniste around 1888 or so. So this diagram is as important to the Martinist tradition as the Kabbalistic tree of life is to Lorianic Kabbalah, to the Golden Dawn, or in general, the Western esoteric tradition. Very little has been written on this diagram in English, and most of the di many of the diagrams that have been passed down over the last hundred years have had numerous errors, whether in the labeling or in the diagram itself. The goal of this lesson here is to be is to first give our complete ex explanation of the diagram and then to review some of the diagrams and show how they are incorrect and how they were not recorded and transmitted correctly. Now this lesson is going to primarily come from our new publication you see in the right, 10 Instructions to Men of Desire. This is Louis-Claude de Saint-Martin's Instructions for the Temples of the Elo Cohen elevated to the greatest glory of the eternal. It is our new translation and a part of the OMS or Order Martini Souverains Elo Cohen source series. We have taken the original handwritten manuscript of Louis-Claude de Saint-Martin and we have translated this ourselves into a new version with hundreds of scholarly footnotes. There's the original manuscript there for chapter one. There's chapter one. You see already on the first page there are five footnotes. I think in total this document has something like 240 footnotes to explain its nature. <clears throat> so let's start right off with the complete explanation of the universal table. So here's our version of the universal table, corrected, and many thanks to our brother DKC for his tireless efforts and working on with me to create our version of this table. I'm going to maximize this for the moment. Here we can see, which doesn't really matter, what I will do. Here we can see a, an ancient version of this from the NAF 22373 manuscript, which Robert Amadou claims is drawn by San Martin. This is one of the cleanest diagrams as far as geometry goes, and it's also very clearly labeled. One thing we can see here right away is that it references in this circle the major eight and seven spirits. Most versions do not have both those spirits there. We do, eight and seven spirits. <clears throat> Next we have another Elocone manuscript. I was unable to identify the source of this version, but it is another very clean version. Here's another version, not as clean, from the Bibliothèque de Grenoble, the BMG, Bibliothèque Municipale de, Gren de Grenoble. We also see here the 8 and 7 clearly labeled. Here is a definitely not very clean version from Willermoz, supposedly, as Robert Armadou says. This is reproduced in his document, Martiniste No. 2, in the chapter on the CBCS Squire Novice Degree, their fifth degree. And this was reproduced in Amadou's document Martinis number one, which is a full facsimile of the Ten Instructions to Men of Desire, the handwritten version of San Martin. Let's jump into the diagram. If you have a version of this diagram, I recommend that you print it out 11 by 17, stick it in your above your desk, wherever you study, so that you have it for whenever you're studying these Martinist texts. So the universal table is essentially the framework or map of the Martinez, Martinezist or Martinist cosmology, much as the Tree of Life is a central diagram of Lorianic Kabbalah. At first, it even appears similar in shape and structure to the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, 
Yet upon a closer look, there are many differences. Uh, I would warn you that attempts to graft the systems upon each other generally lead to confusion, disorder, and frustration. And the Martinist universal table should be approached as its own system on its own terms. So in this lesson, we will present several versions of this diagram, including the ancient forms of our past masters, which you just saw, as well as modern drawings and interpretations. So at the top, we have the divine immensity, symbolized by the semicircle. That is this section here at the top. We're going to have our clean version on the left, and here on the right, we're going to be uh, toggling through some other versions. We're going to be toggling through a very clean original version. Let's see if I can make this a little larger for our viewing. Too big. So at the top, we have the divine immensity, the semicircle. This is the realm of the divine eternal, the monad, God, the first principle. If we were going to link this to the Hermetic Kabbalah, to the Lurianic Kabbalah, this would essentially be like the Ein Sof or the Ein Sof Or, the unknowable, that from which God emanates all things. Below this semicircle is either a large over-encompassing circle or as we see in these older, in some of these versions, a long oval. Here we see, this is almost like a square. <clears throat> Here we see a long oval encompassing the rest of the diagram. Other versions show it more circular. We chose to go with the more circular format. This large circle is labeled the super celestial or supra celestial immensity. L'immensité sur celeste. So above the celestial. Um, immensity should be known, should be taken to, to mean an aeon or a universe or a reality or a realm or a plane. These first two worlds, the divine immensity and the super celestial immensity, are connected by this first sphere, which is called the denary circle root meaning 10, or the circle 10 of the divine spirits, also known as superior spirits. For more information on this, uh, view our lessons on numbers. We're going to assume that you already understand the basic number system of Martinezism. So within, these, within this denary circle, labeled both a 0, a 1, and therefore 10 as well, is an image of a flaming sun. It's a little happy sun right there too. So the divine spirits of the superior inhabit this first sphere. <clears throat> the outer circle in which the rest of the diagram unfolds is labeled the spirit of double power and the Nicaean traditionnel's numero spatial de ooh, 2017 or something like that. <clears throat> I'm going to pull that up for you all to see. So they label this outside circle as a spirit, l'esprit de Blumont fort, the spirit of double power, the eight spirit. Here you have our simple diagram. Here's a larger diagram of it, more expanded. So we can say that this outer rung, at least according to that one version, is contained by the eight spirits, but that will come much later. They come into play later on. So from this denary circle, this very first top circle, extended to the left, that is one, then we have two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This second sphere is a circle of the major spirits, eight, which are also labeled a seven in some of the manuscripts. The circle of the major eight and seven spirits. At one time, these spirits were united as both eight and seven spirits. <clears throat> In the legend of the Universal Table, according to G. von Rijenberg, this is also labeled the Septenary, so he calls it the Major Eight, but also the Septenary, Eight and Seven, who contain the Divine Law. From this denary circle extended to our right is the third circle, the circle of the inferior spirits, or the ternary circle. These spirits contain the Divine Precept, so Law, Precept. Together, these first three circles form the first triangle within the divine 
within the super celestial immensity. The first triad. One, two, three, the ten, the eight and the seven, and the three. Which according to this diagram is the law and the precept. In some videos I have said that the ten is the law. And we'll have to co have to cross-reference that. <clears throat> and here we see one, two, three, four. Extending from this first triangle is a reflected triangle right here of the two, the three, and the four. This fourth circle is the circle of the minor spirits called the four spirits, the quaternary spirits, the quaternary circle, completing the second triangle or the first reflected triangle. These are the minor spirits. This completes the first four emanations, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, as a reflection of the eternal, the divine immensity. Okay? Into the super celestial immensity. In one manuscript, these first four labels are labeled as super celestial circles. Hence, they exist within the super celestial immensity. And in the legend, they are labeled as the divine court. Together, they form the divine quadruple essence. That word quadruple or quadruple, you will see used rather indiscriminately by most Martinist authors. Um, it's essentially showing a four and a three nature. They are three, they are four, they are united. So they are both ternary as well as representations of the quaternary or yod heh vav -Heh. Within this section here, one, two, three, four, is the divine court. So these are the first spirits emanated out of the bosom of divinity, extending from the divine immensity. Next, we'll explore the immensities within the super celestial immensity. As an aid, we have borrowed the following diagram right here from Louis Claude de Saint Martin's Ten Lessons to Men of Desire, Chapter 5, Section 1, where the immensities are shown within the planetary spheres or circles. So we see this downward pointing triangle, that final result. That can also be seen as placed directly in the center of these circles. And this diagram could be used to show a three-dimensional version as well, which we'd love to have made at some point. So within this celestial immensity, this first circle we have here, the central axis of uncreated fire. This is the immensity of the axis of uncreated fire, the axis of uncreated fire, or as it is most commonly called, the central fire axis. Who are inhabited by what are they called the spirits of the central fire axis that is what all these little things right here are meant to represent these are all little faces i wonder if i can zoom in on that easily these are all little faces of spirits okay these are actual spirits emanated from the divine to contain, which we will get to in a little bit. As explained in San Martin's Ten Lessons and Pasquale's Reintegration of Beings, these spirits carry within themselves the primitive three spiritual essences, sulfur, mercury, and salt, in an undifferentiated form. So they are they have these three principles, but they are inactive at this point. They have not been modified upon, they have not been activated, they have not brought forth this potential from within them. They're undifferentiated. Once they do bring them forth, they will use these to modify the neutral matter, the chaos, the void, which is not moving yet, without form. They will use this to modify it in order to form and vivify all bodies and carry out the word of the eternal. The word being yod heh vav -Heh, the word being the essence of the divine, which makes all things move. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. These spirits specifically modify and embody Sulfur, fire, and the south at the bottom of the diagram, eventually, in the process of creation. They can be seen drawn as faces in this diagram. <clears throat> Before we get too far into that, one, two, three, three circles. One, two, three. The spirits of central fire axis that contain the fallen spirits. And then as we crystallize down, we come into the rational circle of time of Saturn, the visual circle of the sun, the sensible circle of time, and then the terrestrial immensity. We're going to see how these three circles here, which are these three circles, go from undifferentiated sulfur, mercury, salt, to specifically salt, 
sulfur, mercury, salt, I mean, and then mercury. And then finally, the earthy form. There's those faces. The second circle within, this circle we were just talking about that was is synonymous essentially with the central fire axis, is a celestial immensity. Okay? The celestial immensity, which is that in which the central fire axis is begin to create. Further in, we have the crystalline sphere over the waters. Okay, that's that second sphere in here. It is inhabited by the aquatic spirits or the crystalline, the aquatic spirits of the crystalline or the waters. I'm going to show you the master diagram now. Aquatic, so undifferentiated. Now the aquatic spirits of the crystalline or the salty waters. Salt water, aquatic waters. They provide a cooling action so that the spirits of the central fire axis do not, quote, consume all the celestial and terrestrial bodies so that the fire does not burn away all things. It helps to cool and temper that fire, just like the temperance card of the tarot. These are the circles from Saturn down to the terrestrial bodies. These spirits, the crystalline aquatic, specifically modify and embody salt, saline, aquatic, and eventually we'll see north in the process of creation, north. The innermost circle here, also labeled sensible circle of time, is the terrestrial or elemental immensity, the terrestrial of the elemental mercurial spirits, which specifically modify and embody mercury, solid, and west in the process of creation. This seems very different if you come from a golden dawn background where salt represents the body Mercury represents the fluid or the spe the the uh, the divine portion, and sulfur represents the central portion, the soul. Um, in Martinus color terms, the golden dawn would put mercury as white, sulfur as red, and salt as black. Which we can do that as well, but in this specific diagram, the Earth is mercury solid form. The salt is watery and cooling, and the sulfur is fiery. <clears throat> Last within the terrestrial immensity is the downward pointing triangle. Downward pointing triangle. The terrestrial form is the first label you see. I'm going to zoom in on this for you. The terrestrial form and the terrestrial form, the general universal body, is that of the Earth itself. That is the planet Earth. It is also our solar system. It is the galaxy. It is all physically made manifest matter. You could liken it to Malkut in that sense, the macrocosm. But it also represents the body of man, the terrestrial form, the body of man, the microcosm. And then within its nature is the terrestrial soul. That terrestrial soul which emanated from the bosom of the divine and carries within it the quaternary power of yad heh -Vav -Heh, the lost word which must be discovered within the heart and soul of each candidate, that secret fire which is found in the Adamic earth. Enclosed within this body is that terrestrial soul, like I just said, contain that word. Note that in most of the drawings, this terrestrial form encompasses all three circles, from the mercurial, to the saline, to the sulfur. And it therefore seems to receive and give what looks like energy or fire to and from the central fire access. So we could definitely liken this to the secret fire. And as you proceed with your meditations, you should come to have a Gnostic experience of this. And these should cease to be just words. All right, so now that we've shown a general outline of the, of the diagram and its simplicity, divine immensity, divine spirits of the circle one and zero, major spirits of the eight and seven, the second sphere, third sphere, the inferior ternary spirits, 
fourth sphere, the minor quaternary spirits, all existing within the super celestial immensity, the divine court. Then the celestial immensity, which is formed by the spirits of the central fire axis, creating the boundary of matter and beginning to differentiate into sulfur, salt, mercury, finally condensing into the terrestrial form, which carries within itself the terrestrial soul. Okay, we will now zoom in at the top. Review this all again in a slightly different manner. So, at the top, the divine court, which emanates and extends down. We now have the Saturn. One, so see the order, the direction changes. Now it's one, two, three, four. Whereas before it was one, two, three, four. It mirrors. Okay? One, two, one, two, three, four. The seven planetary circles or seven heavens. First, Saturn, the planetary superior. In the yellow Cohen, Saturn is the superior planet, just as we see it often being used as the superior planet of Bina on the Tree of Life. It is that ring past knot. It separates the supernal triad from the Ruach or from the rest of creation, just as we could consider this to be similar to the supernal triad of the traditional Lurianic tree. Then we have the circle of soul, the solar circle of the sun, which is said to activate, reactivate, and vivify the growth or vegetation which comes from all the particular bodies and general terrestrial bodies. To review again, particular body means your physical body, particular. General terrestrial body means the earth itself or matter itself. Your particular, the macrocosm, is general. And as we would expect, the sun activates, it reactivates, it vivifies, it brings that living principle of life. Third circle is Mercury. Together, the circles 1, 2, and 3, Saturn, Sol, and Mercury, form the third triangle. This is known as the terrestrial paradise. Right here, the terrestrial paradise. Keep that in mind for later. Next, we have the circle 4, Mars. Together, 2, 3, and 4, Sun, Mercury, Mars form the fourth triangle. So we see this reflection going on just like in the Tree of Life. The first is formed, one, two, three. Two, three, four makes a reflection. One, two, three reflects that. Two, three, four reflects that. Together, these two triangles mirror the two triangles of the denary, the superior, inferior, and minor circles like I just showed you. These circles, one, through four here are called the celestial circles or the circles of the majors. So these are all also considered major spirits of the celestial realm. Okay, not to be confused with the major spirits of the super celestial or the divine court. These are them made more manifest in the celestial regions. You could liken that to perhaps absolute and let's say Bria or Yetzira. <clears throat> Okay, let's continue on. Circle 5, 6, and 7. Circle 5 is Jupiter, which governs putrefaction, and it's said to contain the principle. Principle means like the root, the seed. Then there is Venus, which con governs conception and contains the seminal or reproductive principle. That is a further um, differentiation of that same principle. The moon, Luna, number seven, modifies through its fluid the action and reaction of the central fire axis and the solar circle within the created universe. Together, circles five, six, and seven form the fifth triangle, which we can see reflects the fourth triangle. Let me zoom out for a moment. Remember, Luna, through its fluid nature, its astral fluid is lunar light, modifies the action and reaction of the central fire axis, the fire, as well as the solar circle. See how they mirror each other as well? They turn and flip. There's a modification here, 
There's a modification here. Let's continue on. And again, lastly, let's zoom in on it. Lastly is the terrestrial form, the sixth triangle. See, it reflects itself from the fifth again, down to the sixth triangle. This might be interesting to consider in relation to the six days of the first degree symbolic apprentice eloquent initiation. We see this suspended within the immensities, right? It spans mercury, salt, and sulfur. Within it, three minors, two sets of three minors, are said to be attributed to the angles of the terrestrial form. In the south, we have sulfur, originally inhabited by Cain, thence later inhabited, inhabited by Ham, who is a type of Cain. In the north, we have salt, salt, which represents the flesh in this case. And this is... Rep this is um, First inhabited by Seth, then by Yafet. In the west, we have Mercury. In this case, represents the bones. First inhabited by Adam, then by Sem. And within it is the ternary verb, which is also quaternary, yod -he -vav -he. Now, one of the major errors, I'm going to take a foyer, foyer real quick and show you some of the major errors that have been used in the past by other Martinus commentators and expounders. So, T, V, X, West, North, South, T, V, X, right? This is Rijenberg. T, West, V, South, X, North. So we can see that he flipped V and X. He made an error there. He called this south, this north. If that's west, this is north, this is south, as anyone who has worked in any sort of esoteric lodge or even Masonic lodge will know. So number one, he messed that up. And this was perpetuated by orders such as the Order of Qua. Their diagram, this is publicly available on their website, they perpetuated that error and continued to teach that. Okay, that error has been used a lot. Here's from L'Initiation Traditionnelle. Now, they corrected and they showed that this is, in fact, the north. This is, in fact, the south. But then they messed up the other part. They put sulfur in the north and salt in the south. So they fixed one error and made a new error. Okay, these are some of the things that we've tried to fix in our versions. Okay, let's continue on. We're going to talk about the Catechism of the Master Conan. Here's an original copy from, I believe it's Bibliotheque Municipal de Grenoble, BMG 4125, which we have as a complete facsimile transcription and translation available to eligible El Cohen members of those grades. <clears throat> Extract. Why does our earthly body, which remember, that is the terrestrial form, only have three regions in the celestial four, meaning north, west, and south, whereas the celestial has four. Well, super celestial, but, you know, four directions. Because it is only the theater and the receptacle of the expiation, and the celestial is that of reconciliation. So first, we must work in expiation. We must atone, and then we can rise to the quaternary and work on reconciliation. How do you distinguish the three terrestrial regions? From the general terrest terrestrial general body to the sensible circle. So general terrestrial to the sensible circle. We should Another way to see this triangle is within this circle, as we saw on a previous page. From within the general terrestrial to the sensible. Let's go over those circles again. Sensible circle of time, visual circle of the sun, 
rational circle of time or the sat or saturn so sensible has the terrestrial visual contains the solar rational contains saturn how do you distinguish the four celestial regions from the divinity to the circle of double divine power from thence to the super celestial circle to the saturnary circle surnamed rational and that's where we get some of these labels over here from the divine divine immensity and the divine spirits thence to the circle of double divine power so that confirms what renaissance traditionnel labeled this circle as the circle of the divine double power the eight and then from there the super celestial circle that'd be everything contained within this they, they'd be one and the same really Thence to the Saturnary circle, which is named Rational, the time or Saturn. How do you distinguish between the temporal, general universal body from the divine spiritual heaven? Remember, that means the macrocosm of Earth from the divine spiritual heaven. Now, that actual word in French is Celeste Divine Spirituelle. The superiority of one over the other can be distinguished only by their form, action, and operation. So hopefully that will make some more sense through your practices. What is the form of the celestial divine? Four circumferences. Perfect in proportion, virtue, action, and operation, which is clearly explained by thought, action, operation, and contemplation, which teaches us the true quadruple quadruple or quadruple divine essence i believe they're actually talking about this right here these emanations of one two three and four which we saw were were the quadruple divine essence these are proportion virtue action in operation thought action operation contemplation which teaches us the true quadruple divine essence why was it taught that the divine immensity was only four circles. So these four are extending for the divine immensity. They are a part of the divine immensity. They are the divine court made manifest. This French word immensité can also be rendered as vastness, the divine vastness or realm or aeon. We've used the word immensity to be in harmonious, harmonious agreement with other Martinez's texts. The answer is to be a perfect guarantor of the various particular and personal operations within each spiritual being which each spiritual being must perform in the presence of the divinity and that of his spiritual brothers. All right, that's a mouth load. <clears throat> so four operations, basically, that you have to perform. What are we to understand by these four circles forming the divine immensity? So yes, these four circles are the spirits that form the divine immensity. That there are only four kinds of spiritual beings which must operate the divine cult or the divine worship, the divine operation. The divine order. Named thusly by divine wisdom, the denary spirit ten, the octonary spirit of double power, the septenary major spirit, and the quaternary minor spirit four right here. Now we start seeing different numbers, right? You're going to see different numbers used depending on what era of the cone we're talking, depending on who is writing, what text we're writing, and what that should show you is what era of the myth, myth we're dealing with. You see up here in the top, The divine immensity being composed of 10, 8, 7, 3, also 10, 7, 3, and 4. 10, 7, 3, and 4. Okay, these numbers shift because of the fall and shift depending on where we are in the myth. These are the numbers we're going to most commonly use in your actual operations. You're going to most commonly use 10, 8, 7, 4 as thought, will, word, and man. There are only four classes of spirits. No, very respectable master. There cannot be other than them without degrading the faculty of the holiness and the holiness of the divine spiritual power. I think I was supposed to say, are there thus more than four? But it's sometimes these are not the clearest. Let's see what this says. All other classes of spirits correspond to the fallen spirits of different titles. There we go. So there's only four 
without degrading the faculty and holiness of the divine. The other classes are degradations, and they are not a part of the divine spiritual power anymore. What proves this is that there are only four celestial regions, the ten, eight, seven, and four. Let's read this footnote. These operations are those of the divine theurgic cult of worship codified with extreme precision. The only method the miner has to communicate with his creator, the only thing left of his primitive power of creation, are the images of the theurgical cult which must be restored to the creator. The elected miner will therefore transmit to man the precise instructions on worship. He will communicate to the men of desire a frequent expression of the RER, which became a centerpiece in Martinezism, or the way of the heart. It's also clearly labeled in the reintegration of beings. To whom he has sent the mystical gifts, which he has received himself, and with which he will mark with a character an ineffable seal on the minor who will become reconciled. So this is the mark that is symbolized in your associate Elu initiation when you are marked with the seal of the order. It is a precursor of the type of mark that you will receive through your work, directly from deity, directly through your good companion. Next question. What is the form of the general terrestrial and universal terrestrial body? Universal temporal body. The general, member is the macrocosm. It is triangular. But by its other numbers and its mixed ternary temporal spirit, it is susceptible to be enumerated by its intimacy to the centenary number and subdivided by its own nonary number, which is the chief number of deformity and destruction, the action of all corporeal forms. So we see that the, the body contains the seven. We could say that those are the seven planets, the seven sephirot, the seven double letters, the Hebrew alphabet. But it can also be subdivided by what they call the nonary, the nine. And there are many chapters and tons of footnotes in this book about how the three divides itself into the six and subdivides itself into the nine, therefore creating corruption. Do you arrive at the conclusion that the four circumferences which form the divine immensity have the same form as the general terrestrial body and that of the universal body? No very respectable master. Why is that? Because the form of the divine immensity is purely spiritual and not subjected to time. You see, this is all outside of the rational circle of time. Time had not yet come into being. Because there is no material substance in it, nor any revolution as opposed to all other forms that are material composites and susceptible to revolution, both temporal and spiritual. Revolution means movement and change, revolving, wheeling, changing. Splendor orbium volventium. The splendor of the orbs, revolving. Question. You thus hold the divine immensity to be superior to the universal vastness. The universal vastness, meaning like the earth, the immensity of time and space. And of course, the divine immensity is superior. One cannot doubt this by the fact that it is circular in its immensity. We can't even see it, though, the full circle. Circular as opposed to triangular. Innumerable and indivisible in all regards. And recognizing that the faculty of the spirit is to describe its circumference without material limits, a faculty that cannot be granted to material temporal bodies. This should shed some illumination upon the nature of the compasses for regular Freemasons, as opposed to that of the square. Next question. What do Mater Cohen work with? with the perfect knowledge of the spiritual temporal power and the spiritual divine power. So that would mean the spiritual power of time, the spiritual power of matter, as well as the spiritual divine power. So the power of the below and the above. What is the difference between these two powers? The spiritual temporal power, that which is below, is passive because it is limited by the delay of time. It is material, it is temporal. While that of the divine, the spiritual or the spiritual divine, not having ever been subject to time, is not susceptible to change. This is the reason that the divine power is superior to the temporal. It is eternal and unchanging, whereas this is changing, moving, evolving, decaying. How many kinds of spiritual classes do you recognize in the temporal universe? This time they say three kinds. So this is the temporal universe, not the divine, the temporal 
There's the ternary, the three spirits, the centery, and the material nonary. So the three, the six, and the nine that I mentioned earlier. Three divides to six, subdivides to nine. Three plus three is six. Three plus three plus three is nine. Three times three is nine. Now read more about this in the videos on numbers and the new essay on numbers in this book, which will hopefully break down theosophical addition and multiplication very clearly, as well as the nature of the roots. Which is the virtue of each one of these spirits in their different classes? The virtue of the ternary spirits, the three spirits, consists in pres presiding over matter, which constitutes the various bodily forms contained in the universe, i.e. the three Salt, sulfur, mercury. Mercury, salt, sulfur, the three of the body. Where the centery, or six spirits, consists in presiding over the law of universal time. So, spirits of time, or six. And that of the nonary spirits consists in contravening against the different operation of these ternary and centery spirits, just as they work against the actions and operations of the various bodily and spiritual beings, which is supposed to operate in this universe for the greatest glory of the eternal and for the justice of his inhabitants. So what does that mean? Well, it's the nine are working against the three and the six, against the action and the operation, the three and the six. Remember the six operations of the divine that we learned about in the first degree apprentice initiation of the Cohen. The nine work against it. They are the corrupted. They're working against the triple and the centery. Next question. How many kinds of temples are contained in the universe? Three kinds. The general, the particular, and the universal. How are they represented? By the sensible circle of time, the visual circle of time or the sun, and the rational circle of time or Saturn. So three circles of time. Sensible, visual, rational, which we know also link into mercurial, salt, sulfur. <clears throat> Do you know the work which is practiced in each one of these temples? At this point, the Master Cohen is unaware of it still, not being yet consecrated for these kinds of operations. So there is an explanation of these, primarily these three circles in the center. Now we're going to move on to the augmented key of the universal table. Let me see if I can toggle this. Hmm. One moment. the augmented key to the universal table, this diagram here. Now, I would recommend you have this printed out next to your universal table as well in your study space so you can compare them. Here we'll explore another version. Um, and this is Willemo's version, according to Amadou at least. There's the diagram. And let's go through it. From the top. I wonder if it would be helpful to have a small UT next to it as well. Let's see if I can do that. Cool. Nice. So this is the best way to study it, have both these diagrams out in front of you. From the top, the number one God represents the divine eternal, the monad, the God, the first principle of the divine immensity, just as the divine immensity symbolizes. They are the same thing. And there's this veil. The original powers, one, two, three, four, represent the divine quaternity, or quaternary, the quadruple slash quadruple divine essence. Remember, one plus two plus three plus four equals ten in Theosophic edition. One equals ten. <laughs> um, these are the same as here. One, two, three, four. The divine quadrinity, the divine court, the original four powers, the quadruple divine essence. Now the divine immensity, complete with the ten, eight, 
7, and 3. That is one version of it. 10, 8, 7, and 3. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Represents the original or ancient regime of the emanated spirits, which correspond with the corresponds of each class of spirits to the above quaternity. quaternity. The first circle is 10, second circle is 8, third circle is 7, fourth circle is 3. So you can all see this is 10, 8, 7, 3, which is something you see used in a lot of diagrams, but not always very clearly labeled. We tried to make that very clear in our version, okay? And here's an example of how the order of qua got it incorrect. 10, 8, 7, 9. Don't know where that 9 came from, man. And then they have a 10, 7, 8, 4, but that's also incorrect. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, after the prevarication, see that split right here? Prevarication. After the prevarication, Within the super celestial immensity is shown the new regime of the emanated and emancipated spirits. 10, 7, 3, 4. 10, 7, 3, 4. So hopefully that makes sense of this diagram now. It is both 10, 8, 7, 4, 10, 7, 3, 4. 10, 8, 7, 3, 10, 7, 3, 4, 10, 8, 3, 4. 10, 8, 7, 3 is the original. 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8 and 7, then 3, then 4 is another version. In the social immensity, so let's go down into the social immensity now. You can see it small. It's shown the numbers 1, so here's a super celestial, boom, 10, 7, 3, 4 now, right? Check, we're all good. <clears throat> now, this line here represents this line of the celestial immensity. We're now in that realm, okay? One, two, three, four. Those are the first circles. One, two, three, four. Saturn, Sol, Mercury, Mars. Saturn, Sol, Mercury, Mars. Next line. Terrestrial immensity. Within the terrestrial immensity are the numbers five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? <clears throat> and those are Jupiter, number five. Venus number six, Luna number seven, five, six, seven. Lastly are the three directions of the terrestrial form, which symbolize eight, sulfur, blood, south, cane, ham. Nine, flesh, salt, north, seth, yafet. Ten, mercury, bones, west, adam, sem. So again, God, the first four powers, the divine immensity with the 10, 8, 7, and 3 before the fall. The pre The 10, 7, 3, and 4. 10, 7, 3, and 4 emanated in the super celestial immensity. Then the celestial immensity, the ring past knot formed by the spirits of the central fire axis, which contains Saturn, 1, Sun, 2, Mercury, 3, Mars, 4. Next line this is the terrestrial immensity here. Terrestrial immensity, in which we have 5 through 10. 5 Jupiter, 6 Venus, 7 Moon, 8 Sulfur, 9 Salt, 10 Mercury. Here's another way to look at this diagram. Divine immensity, 1, 2, 3, 4. Superior, major, inferior, minor. Superior, major, inferior, minor, which at one time carried the 10, 8, 7, 3, and now contain 10, 7, 3, 4. Okay? They are always, though, 10, superior, major, inferior, minor. The numbers just shifted over. Okay? Then within the super celestial immensity, so that would be the divine immensity in here. Then we have that come down 10, 7, 3, 4, like we just saw there, right? You could say these are really the same thing. The new regime is a super celestial immensity. Superior, major, inferior, minor. Then within the celestial immensity, within, within the immensity of the axis of uncreated fire, that is formed by the inferior spirits three, the ternary spirits, the original ternary spirits right here, 
that were emancipated from the divine immensity to form the ring past not to form the barrier within the void in order to contain the first prevaricated spirits, the first fallen spirits that rejected the divine law by having a thought contrary to the divine law, who acted with their own will, who created an action against divinity and created the first war in heaven. These ternary spirits were emancipated to form the, the axis, the central fire axis, the flaming axis they could not get past, quite similar to the flaming sword of Lurianic Kabbalah in the Golden Dawn. These three spirits, these ternary spirits, carried within themselves the undifferentiated three principal agents of sulfur, salt, and mercury. Within that central fire axis is created the celestial immensity, and all these circles we have come down now, right? First, there are the major spirits, which are a seven at this in this level of it. Usually we see major as eight being a double, but this these planetary spirits are seven. Okay? Now here they do a one equals seven, two equals six, three equals five, four equals four, five equals three, six equals two, seven equals one. Similar to the grades of the Golden Dawn, the SRIA, and the Golden Rosenkreuz. Okay, similar to the Tree of Life. The first spear, the first sphere here is also the seventh one on the way up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? Seven, five, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay? That is Saturn. And you got the second sphere. Two or six, soul. And we've got, so let's show there's three different breakdowns. Major, inferior, minor, seven, three, four, then demons. There's a second breakdown as the rational, visual, sensible. Rational, visual, sensible circles going inwards. They're also called the circle celestial majors. That's that big outer circle, remember, the eight. Circle of celestial minors. And then celestial and terrestrial. Minors, celestial, terrestrial. Within the terrestrial immensity, the central circle, which is also this downward point triangle we could see it here in the center as well of the circle we have the minors which are adam and shem canaan and ham seth and yafet this is the world of the demons the irrational animals the vegetables and the minerals <clears throat> let me see if i can find a better way to describe this with another diagram. So Amadou's table shows a shift in power or number attributed to the spirits after the prevarication. Pardon, one moment. Figure the way out to do it. Check it out. Amadou's table right here we're describing. It shows a shift in power or number attributed to the spirits after the prevarication. The so-called first ancient regime, 10873 formula. The spirits after then, after the prevarication, follow a 10734 formula. Note, because of this confusion, we included both major 7 and 8 spirits in our universal table. But note, however, that the 10873 specifically refers to the spirits within the divine immensity. Okay? So to try to make that a little more clear. 10873 10873 specifically refers to the spirits of the divine court. Whereas the 10734 formula more shows what we 
<coughs> after the prevarication. Due to the prevarication, the eternal emancipated or sent forth spirits to the furthest region to contain the first perverse or prevaricating spirits. These spirits became, these are the ternaries, they became the spirits of the central fire access, part of the class of the inferior ternary spirits, possessing the three spiritual essences, sulfur, salt, and mercury, which they would use to modify neutral matter to create bodies, movement, and life. Another categorization is given for the concentric circles within the celestial immensity, rational, visual, and sensible. The rational circle of time corresponds with the circle of Saturn. The visual circle of time corresponds with the circles of Sol, Mercury, and Mars, but specifically Sol. So Saturn is its own circle. This triad here, 2, 3, 4, is that second circle of visual. The rational and visible circles together are also the circles of the celestial majors, which on the legend are sections H through M. H-I-L-M. The sensible circle of time, this inner circle, corresponds with the circles of Jupiter, Venus, and Luna, N, O, and P, or 5, 6, 7, which are also the circles of the minors, both celestial minors and terrestrial minors. Lastly, within the terrestrial immensity are the biblical minors, Three minors are attributed to the angles of the terrestrial form. As we should know by now, south, blood, sulfur, cane, ham. North, salt, flesh, seth, yafet. West, mercury, bones, adam, sem. The terrestrial immensity, the world we live in, is also populated with demons, irrational animals, vegetables, and minerals, i.e. the four kingdoms. Let's move on now to the legend of the Universal Table. There's the legend, page 100. A, the divine immensity, absolute unity. B, this whole thing, everything except the divine immensity, is the emanated universe. Notice the footnote. We adjusted Rijenberg's transcription of this, which said the created universe. Because creation doesn't truly begin until the central fire access, until Q, okay? Which is not sequential. It's not A to Q, but it doesn't exist until this section, until after G, let's say. C, right here. The denary circle, the first circle, the zero, the ten, contain the divine spirits of the superior. D, that's the center of these four circles, one, two, three, four, C, F, E, G. Okay? Unfortunately, they aren't very clear. Rijenberg isn't very clear on labeling these. He doesn't go the same direction. Well, he has one, two, three, four. Yeah. So D is the three divine super celestial heavens. The divine spiritual circles containing the three circles, the septenary, the ternary, and the quaternary. So not counting the fourth circle, the superior. This is the seven, the three, the four. Ten, seven, three, four. Okay? The divine super celestial heavens. E is specifically the circle of the major spirits containing the divine law. The major spirits at this time are seven, the divine law. F, the ternary circle, the three spirits contain the inferior spirits, the divine precept. They're the ones specifically that get emancipated to form the central fire axis. G, the quaternary circle. The fourth circle, the quaternary circle, the circle of minor spirits containing the divine commandment in regard to the denary circle. The three four, first four circles form the divine quadruple essence or the divine spiritual court. So if you recall our short summary of the Martinus myth in 10 stages in your first degree associate Elu handbook. This is like the first spirits, the 10, 8, 7, that then the fourth is emanated in the center. 
or the superior, major, inferior, the fourth is emanated after, but was made to rule over them. This would this essentially is where you could place Adam Cadmon. Okay, the first man. And this essentially is where you would place yourself in the Associate Elu initiation. Here's right where you're at, meant to guard. After all this occurs, when you're sent to redeem the fallen spirits, this would be the spot that man was originally placed. And then he fell into the void, into this terrestrial form. But he always cured within him the divine fire that has to be re realized. <clears throat> By removing the husks of these circles, the husks of condensation of matter. <clears throat> Next, we have H, the circle of Saturn, the one, two, three, four, fifth circle, H, Saturn. This is the planetary superior, like we said, named the first heaven. Then we have I, the solar, the denary solar circle. So that's showing that the solar circle, soul has some relation to 10. Denary solar circle, right? The sun is the 10. The second heaven. It activates, reactivates, and vivifies the vegetation and growth, which comes from all the particular bodies and general bodies. So it activates the principles, the alchemical principles within our bodies so that they do live. So they begin movement and change. But that also makes us decay. L, Mercury. The third heaven. M, Mars, that's convenient. The fourth heaven. These four circles, H, I, L, M, or five, six, seven, eight, or I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, Saturn, Sol, Mercury, Mars, form the celestial majors. So heavenly. Ternary added. Because Rosenberg mix missed it. N, the next set. Circle of Jupiter, the fifth heaven. Governs putrefaction and contains the principle. O, Venus, the sixth heaven. Governs conception and contains the seminal or reproductive principle. I think we know what that means. P, the seventh heaven of Luna. The moon modifies through its fluid the action or reaction of the central fire axis and the solar circle within the created universe. So the moon doesn't activate outside of the spirit's central fire axis. It receives their, um, it works with that initial boundary, that ring past knot. And you could liken this. Notice that Saturn is the first one within that central fire axis. Luna is the last one. This is very similar to Saturn in Bina and Luna at Yasad, right before Malkut and Earth. Okay, so there's definitely a link going on here. Between this, Moon and Central Fire Axis, Moon and Saturn, and Yasad and Bina. Ponder that. There's also an interaction, as it says, between Moon and the Sun, or L Luna and Tiferet, Yasad and Tiferet. Contemplate, contemplate how these are reflections of each other. That should hopefully really open up the diagram, if you're already familiar with the Tree of Life. Six, the Central Axis, the immensity of the Axis of Uncreated Fire. This axis gives the principle of life to all bodies. It activates and reactivates them. R, the terrestrial form, whose center was inhabited by Noah. Noah inhabited the very center. S, the terrestrial heart, the terrestrial soul, in which is the lost, fourfold, quaternary, quadruple divine word. The secret fire. T, West, Mercury, inhabited by Adam and Sem. V, South, Sulfur, correctly labeled in our diagram, inhabited by Cain and Ham, also known as midday or noon, just as the sun rises in the south at midday, a meridian height, which is the beauty and glory of the day. X, the North, Salt, the region inhabited by Seth and Yafet, also written as the Septentrion, or Northern Wind. The point of greatest symbolic darkness. And here's our full diagram. It 
This is our master key, which has all the extra labels on it that we have not seen in any other version. These here are the sensible circles of minors, celestial or terrestrial, heavenly or earthly. So you could say like the bodhisattvas and the mundane person. Whereas these circles here, these four, are the circles of the celestial majors. So the Enochs, the Christs, etc., etc. Let's go over briefly these Elocoen correspondence tables of Robert Amadou. Sorry if that's not too clear. These diagrams are going to help you to see the connections between numbers, okay, between diagrams, and hopefully elucidate a lot of the mysteries of the Cohen, okay? Close this. I'm going to try to make this as big as possible while still being able to see the UT. Very good. All right. So the number one two and three. This is all column one, row two, row three. One represents intent. These are the numbers of the ternary. So describing the trinity, describing one, two, and three. One represents intention within the divine faculties, the three divine faculties. These are all threes. So it's going to, so it's going to compare the numbers of the ternary, one, two, and three, with the three divine faculties, the, the um, operations of divinity, the three divine persons or parts of them of divinity, the three divine numbers, 10, 8, 7. The three principal words of creation, intention, will, and word. The three rules of the cult or worship. The three acts of creation. The three ways to relate that God of relating God to man or relating man to God. The three aspects of the life of man. And the three circles of the course of man. Okay, so hopefully this will be a bit fruitful and new. So one, intention is thought and intention within the thought, within the eternal. Specifically is thought. It is the father, which relates to the number 10. So 10 is the father. It is the commandment in this version. Uh, that's not always, you're going to see some inconsistencies in this, okay? But we'll see how this works out. So the commandment is, boom, right there. Acts of creation, the descent of the general minor to earth. So... The one represents the general minor descending into earth. Of God to man. So to man, this represents, number one represents God. But of man to God, to God, the number one represents man. That is a very interesting thing that needs to be contemplated. One to man represents God. One to God represents man. Within the life of man, you could say this is like his Kabbalistic parts of the soul. This is the divine aspect of man. Within the circles of man, so those three circles here, this is the rational circle of Saturn. Now on to two. Two, which we know represents confusion um, in its fallen state. But here, two is also the second power, represents the word, the intention, will, operation. It is also the will. So there's a... There's a balance going back and forth between 7 and 8, 8 and 7, right? Will and word, will and word. There's also the action when it made manifest, the word, the will, the action. It represents the sun, the divine number of 8. The word of creation is will. It is the law. And it represents in creation the junction or union of the major spirit with us. So that is the Christ force uniting with man. Of God to man, it represents the double power. So it is the four of man, 
the minor, the quaternary, becoming united with the major, becoming an eight. A four of above and a four of below making eight. When man looks at this number, it considers it to be the good companion spirit. And here's what they mean by that link between seven and eight. God, when it, unite, when it unites with man, God considers it to be an eight. When man looks up at God, looking to unite with it, it considers it its seven. It's good companion spirit, it's HGA. In the lives of man, it can also be seen as the demonic, though, being dual in nature. Don't worry about that too much. Circles of man, the course of man, it is the intellectual, the visual circle of soul, the sun, the second circle. On to three, the numbers of the ternary. The divine faculties, this represents the operation of the divinity. It is also his action and word, his will and operation. In the divine persons, it is the Holy Spirit, which is seven. So Father, Son, Holy Spirit, ten, eight, seven. And this is what you're going to most commonly see in your actual operations is this version showing the ternary of divinity. We're invoking the highest aspects of spirits, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, which is the word made manifest, the word being expressed through the breath of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Elohim. In the, begin in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was out form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, the Ruach Elohim, moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. That is this word being expressed. In the rules of the cult, this represents the divine precept. In the acts of creation, this represents the major spirit, limiting the general and the particular. So creating a ring past knot. When God looks down at this, it sees it as the good companion spirit, the seven. When man looks up at it, it sees this as the major spirit of double power. The Holy Spirit is who it will receive the major spirit. It will become Christ of the Father through the Holy Spirit. In the lives of man, this is the passive nature of man. The Holy Spirit is passive to us who is active. We have to, and that is why meditation, contemplation, and these ritual practices are the are so essential to us uniting with our good companion spirit and becoming a major spirit of double power. In the lives of man, this is the passive. In the three circles, this is the inner circle, the sensible, and the other five planets. Here's another set of comparing three to other aspects of three. Three, and then all these versions, right? Divine power in the three circles. There's the minor, the Christ, the, the spirit, the four, the eight, the seven. We're familiar with that. The spirit, the passive soul, the body, the will, the word, the action, the head, the chest, the abdomen, the agent, the instrument, the execution, etc., etc. We also have the ternary showing it as soul, lunar, earth. The holy of holies, the holy, the porch. So you could look going up this. This is like the grades of the Cohen. You start at the porch. You move into the sanctum. You move finally into the holy of holies. So from earth to luna to soul. From Malkut to Yasad to Tiferet. Associate, initiate, SI. From destruction to nurturing to creation, from terrestrials to celestial to super celestial, from sensible to visual to rational, sensible to visual, visual to rational, from celestial to super celestial to spiritual, celestial, super celestial, spiritual, from earth to central fire to the true sun, this sun, etc., etc. Mm. One, sulfur. Two, salt. Three, mercury. Just like these circles. Salt, sulfur, salt, mercury. Fire, water, earth. Fire, water, earth. Right? The fiery spirits, the aquatic spirits, the terrestrial spirits. This is kind of weird. West, north, south. That's the cardinal points. Mm. I don't know about that. 
This was what Amadou wrote. That's probably an that we know that's an error in his part. This stuff is basically right here, explaining this part. One last section. So I know we said don't compare the universal table to the Kabbalistic tree of life, but we're going to compare the universal table to the Kabbalistic tree of life. So we know that we have four circles here, right? Absolute, Bria, Yetzira, Asiya. This is the circular tree of life in four worlds. Yud, He, Vav, He. Fire, water, air, earth. Traditional Lurianic Kabbalah. Okay? Let's grab one of these. Let's make it a little smaller. The divine immensity, this upper part of the circle, from which all emanates forth, could perhaps be likened to the triple unknown nature of the Ein Sof Ur, that which is above Keter, which unfolds through the Ein, nothing, the Ein Sof, limitless. And notice this doesn't show an Ein Sof Ur because Ein Sof Ur, limitless light, is the tree made manifest. That is the limitless light, the boundless nature of universe, of creation, of emanation. The Denry circle, attributed to the one and the power of ten, is essentially the same as the first secret, Sephiroth of Keter, the crown. So this is essentially Keter. The one is essentially Keter. Just as Keter is essentially unknowable, so is this circle of divine spirits, the unattainable monad, which bridges the gap between the unmanifest divine immensity, or Ein Sof Or, and the gap, and that which is to come from it, the supersocial immensity, and everything else. This can perhaps also be seen as the Kabbalistic world of absolute. The top world, absolute literally ne means nearness, the tip of which just barely touches the Ein Sof Or. Right? It's just... This even looks like Ein Sofor. Likewise, Absolute is the world inhabited by the ten divine names of God, right? The divine court. Now, the super celestial immensity, with its four luminaries, or four divine powers, one, two, three, four, ten, eight, seven, three, or ten, seven, three, four, can also be seen as Bria, or creation, which is inhabited by the archangels. So, Absolute, the ten divine names, Bria, the archangels, the first pure spirits, right? The pure powers. The archangels. The spirits of the central fire axis are those who modify neutral matter. The immensity of the axis of uncreated fire could therefore be perhaps likened to the Kabbalistic world of Yetzira. The fiery world, the world of formation, where the choir of angels mold the potential fire of absolute tempered through the creative waters of Bria into the astral world of Yetzira, thoughts and images. Right? These are even faces, thoughts and images. The first time we see faces, the first time we see an image. And that is the border upon which man, the image, stood to battle the void, the fallen spirits, and protect the supernal triad or the divine court. Finally, the Kabbalistic world of Asiya, or action, the central circle, which we will now move over to the basic tree of life, and consider this to be Asiya. The final world of Asiya, in which the planetary bodies are found, i.e. the spheres from Malkut, Keter, to Malkut, 1 equals 10, taking on the real form of matter. This is similar to the formation of the planetary bodies within the celestial immensity, i.e. from Saturn, Sun, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, Luna.
So similar, similar thing going on. So you could say that this is like this. And essentially the supernal triad is all of this up here. Everything below is the seven. There's always three in Kabbalah, the unfallen, the perfect Father, Son, Holy Spirit. One, two, and three, the triad. Then the seven fallen. Three and the fallen. Lastly, the terrestrial immensity, this downward triangle, which rep represent the final Kabbalistic sphere of Malkut, the kingdom. Here, the terrestrial form does here in the terrestrial form does mankind live, seeking to liberate the divine word from the deepest recesses of the terrestrial soul through the alchemical process of vitriol. Visita interiora terra et fecundo in venis occultum lapidem. Visit the interior of the earth. By rectifying, you will discover the hidden stone. Thank you very much for your time and for listening to this rather lengthy lecture. I hope that it helped to elucidate some of the mysteries of the universal table of Martinism. Be sure to study well this Martinist science of numbers section. It is a prerequisite to this. Study this again and again. Print out these diagrams. And then as you read these 10 lessons, they are directly relating to this diagram. We'll just skim through a little bit. It's talking about the first threefold triangle. Here's a divine immensity, spirits of central fire axis, the fallen spirits, the three principles, salt, sulfur, and mercury, beginning to be modified and separated. There it is. Salt, sulfur, salt, and mercury. Ternary verb of creation in the center. Ternary verb. South, north, west. The three circles. This is a diagram directly taken from that. I've, I've redrawn it, but this is this was in Saint Martin's hand in the book. This is another way to look at that triangle as, as a three as a three dimensional tetrahedron. I'd love to see someone make that one day physically. Showing the three becoming the six, becoming the seven. There's your three circles. All right. Thank you all very much. Till next time.